It's finally here. I've been waiting for this monitor for over two years, but the PG35V is here. It's quite possibly the best gaming monitor in the whole world, which it better be when you consider the price tag of £2,700, nearly $3,000. For that kind of money, you'd hope it would make you breakfast in the morning. So it's the combination of being a 35 inch 1440p ultra wide, 1000 HDR, 200 hertz refresh rate, and G-Sync Ultima. All those things together has never been done before. It's just this and Acer's version, the Acer Predator X35. They could have picked a better photo, right? Well, my face aside, a big thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And if you want to stay safe while you're online shopping, banking, or, well, doing whatever it is you do online, go to nordvpn.com slash techchap for 75% off a three-year plan and use the code techchap to get a whole month free. I'll tell you more about it at the end of the video, and I've put a link in the description, so go check that out. But the problem is, watching this video at 60 FPS and without HDR, it does not give you the proper real experience of sitting here and using this in person. With that buttery smooth 200 hz refresh and rich 1000 nit high dynamic range, well, you'll just have to come around my house and try it for yourself. That could get weird pretty quickly, don't do that. The thing is, there's been a couple of other really high-end monitors recently, like the ASUS PG27UQ and Acer Predator X27, 4K, 144Hz, HDR, G-Sync, crazy expensive. But as impressive as they were, I don't know why anyone would buy a 27-inch 4K monitor for gaming. This 35-inch size, this is what I'm talking about. So that's answered my biggest complaint about these cutting edge monitors, size. But the PG35V here solves a few of the problems as well. Firstly, because it's 3440 by 1440 rather than 4K, it's a slightly lower resolution, so there's a little bit more bandwidth going spare in your DisplayPort cable. That means they can bump the refresh from 144 to 180Hz, which you can then overclock through the monitor's OSD to 200Hz. So with those 27 inch monitors, which are 4K and high refresh rate and HDR, that really is right at the limit of what DisplayPort 1.4 can channel through the cable. It's right at the max bandwidth. And so with that, in order to have that high refresh at 4K and HDR on those 27 inch monitors, you had to lower the color depth or enable something called chroma subsampling, which basically just compresses the color. But the good news is this one doesn't have quite the same issue. Now, whether it's because it's not quite 4K, it's a bit lower res, as I say, or they've done some fancy engineering in the background, either way, you don't need to use chroma subsampling to get 200 Hertz HDR at full res. You do need to keep it in 8-bit color. Technically, this can do 10-bit color, well, 8-bit plus FRC, but that's the only compromise. So that's a big improvement. And also the fan noise is a lot better. It actually uses active cooling, but it's much quieter than the older 27-inch monitors. And unless you're in a completely silent room, you won't notice it. But what about the screen itself? Well, it uses a VA panel with a quantum dot film, which helps it achieve the peak 1000 nit brightness. Although when you're not looking at HDR content, it tops out at 500 nits, which is actually still well above average for a monitor. So the benefits of being VA is that it can achieve that crazy high brightness. And I also measured an impressive 2300 to one contrast ratio. The downsides are it's not quite as color accurate as high-end IPS panels. It is factory calibrated though, so out of the box, everything looks good. I measured 100% sRGB and 83% Adobe RGB. Now this also uses something called full array local dimming. So it's backlit rather than edge lit. There's 512 dimming zones, which is up from 384 zones on the 27 inch PG27UQ. So that's the best you can get really without being an OLED panel. We need to talk about this, the fold display, full array local dimming, F-A-L-D. And what can happen, as you can see here with a high contrast background, is you can see the individual lighting zones or even the haloing of like a mouse. You can see this sort of haloing bright area. And it is an issue with fold displays. Unless you have an OLED or a more traditional edge lit panel, then this can be an issue. And we did see that on the 27 inch monitors. So here's the thing, you can actually turn it off. If you go to the OSD, variable backlight, 
you can actually turn off FALD and then it gets rid of the issue completely. So the question then is, why don't you just have it turned off all the time if it introduces these weird anomalies? Well, having FALD enabled does improve the blacks, the darks. If you don't have it, if you turn it off, it actually switches to a static black background. So you don't get quite as deep colors, the color accuracy isn't as good. And also if you're playing HDR games, it actually forces you to use it. You have to either use it in fast, normal or gradual mode. You can't turn it off. So when you've got a high contrast picture, we've got this obviously white window on top of the gray background. It is very obvious, but actually the good news is in games, I've not seen it at all. You just can't see, even in Metro with its super dark uh, lighting, I haven't seen it. So it's all a bit complicated, but my takeaway is, having used this for a little while now, if you're watching videos or gaming in SDR or HDR, I would keep it on in the fast mode because you just can't see it when you're doing normal gaming stuff. It's only when you've got these, as I say, sort of flat contrasty backgrounds, you're more likely to see when you're doing work in apps like Lightroom, Photoshop, that you may actually see it. So it's not a deal breaker for me, and it's also not unique to this Asus. It's any monitor with a fold backlight. Playing something like Metro Exodus or Battlefield 5 on this with HDR, it's just spectacular. There's no other word for it, and it's proper HDR as well, 1000 nit. Not fake HDR where monitors just stop the saturation and sharpness, or say basic HDR 400. This is the good stuff. So I'm playing a little bit of Far Cry 5 here, and it's still a beautiful looking game, and it's a really good example of how good HDR can be in games. So this is with HDR off, and then with HDR, <laughs> it is so much brighter. Really, it's almost, you almost have to look away from the sunlight, because this can peak at a thousand nits with HDR. As well as being a lot brighter, there's just, kind of an extra level of depth to everything, to the colors. You know what it's like? It's like peeling off a plastic screen protector that's been sort of dulling and muting the colors. It's so much nicer. It is still true that PC HDR gaming is a bit, well, limited. The quality of it is largely down to how it's been developed, and there's still not a huge library of games, but it is growing, and there are some big AAA titles. But it's not just about games. You could fire off a bit of Netflix or YouTube, and you can watch HDR videos and movies. So that's the high dynamic range, but then we've also got that 200 hertz refresh rate. The issue is though, are you actually getting 200 FPS in your games to fully take advantage of that 200 hertz refresh rate? The answer is probably not. At this resolution with high settings, and especially if you have ray tracing enabled in games, although you probably would turn that off if you're playing competitively, but even with a 2080 Ti and an i9-9900K, it's tricky to get even above 100 FPS, unless you drop the settings or drop the resolution, or you're just playing less demanding games. So that is worth bearing in mind. If you're not getting over 144 FPS, then you're not gonna see any benefit over a 144Hz monitor. And finally, we have G-Sync Ultimate. NVIDIA say a monitor has to pass over 300 tests to get the certification, and it works with HDR and a wider range of refresh rates. So this helps reduce screen tearing and smooth everything out at lower frame rates. So far then, we've just talked about the screen, but what do you make of the design? It's definitely going for that cyberpunk gamery aesthetic with a whole bunch of RGB as well, which you can customize using Aura Sync. Or if you prefer, you can just turn it all off. So I've got this pushed back as far as I can on my desk. It's one of those standard YouTubers set up the uh, IKEA Colby worktop, but it still takes up basically half of the depth. So that's worth bearing in mind if you have a really shallow desk. Alternatively, of course, you could visa mount it, so that would fix the issue. As for ports, we get one HDMI 2 and one DisplayPort 1.4, although you should always use the DisplayPort as HDMI has less bandwidth and more limitations. There's also a couple of USB 3 ports and a 3.5mm headphone jack. So there's no question, this is a very impressive monitor. But for £2,700, I don't think I'll be buying one anytime soon. So it is eye-wateringly expensive, and easy to poke fun at for that reason. But it's also pushing the boundaries, and you will always pay more for cutting-edge tech. Even if there are still limitations around the bandwidth of ports, the fold backlight, and also not being professionally colour accurate. So it's not perfect and way out of most of our price ranges, but still, given the specs and the experience of playing games on this, I would say it is the best gaming monitor you can buy right now in the world, on the planet, full stop. But if you do fancy one of these for yourself and you've possibly got more money than cents, I have put links in the description below, so go and check that out. Now, whether you're at home or traveling, it's so important to keep your data safe. 
you're always at risk of hackers and people stealing your information. So using NordVPN, which is one of the most trusted privacy and security services in the world, I mean, PC might give it a perfect score, you get peace of mind when using your phone or computer. They have 24 hour customer support, super fast service, iOS and Android apps, so it's easy to browse the web securely. So if you want to keep your data safe, go to nordvpn.com slash techchap where you can get 75% off a three year deal and enter the code techchap to get a whole month free. Thanks for watching guys. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and I'll catch you next time right here on the Tech Chap.